Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thanks for your tweets. Craig with me in the studio. Nadem, Frank, and a sick shack of his lot, but fear not. He's going to battle through his man flu. I'm battling through, Dan. You look terrible, yeah. Shaq. You look really bad, mate. <laughs> Have you had your vaccine? Yes. Have you had you your know, vaccine? You know this flu, Dan. It's a tough one, man flu. <laughs> That's it, Frank. It's a tough Stay one. Away. Anyway. <laughs> Have you had your vaccine, Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, oh, I have. Craig. You don't look well, Long mate. Long time ago. Oh. <laughs> look well. You don't look well. Oh, I wouldn't man. buy a Christmas tree this year just in case. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely and cheery. Good, good. Uh, Nadim, you're coming over here next week. Are you all right to drive? Mm. Don is scared of driving because he doesn't know how red lights work in America. No, no, I lived there for two and a half years. I figured yep. it out. Yep. You shouldn't take too long. I'll be just fine, yeah. Yeah, you, exactly. if you want, you can, just, you can drive me around. It's, I'll uh, be no, I'll be over here driving. Robo, Robo, driving. When Robo used to come regular, Robo never <laughs> used to take a car either, did he? No. We used to say to him, why don't you take a car? They'll pay for it. Yes. Right, they'll give you a car, rental car. And he's like, ah, oh, no. You're stuck in the hotel. Yeah. I won't mention the hotel, but the place he was staying, it was a nice hotel, there's not yeah. a lot going on no, around No, but he it. doesn't know how to use Uber either, like he didn't... <laughs> and he'd be stuck there and he'd say, no, I like being here, just in case they need me. Like, what is that, an emergency service? <laughs> like in case fireman. they need me. Like, <laughs> Get a bloody car uh, and yeah. go and have a night out. Yeah. Frank, I, I drove you around the last time you were here. You get a car this time when you come over? Yes, I don't want you to be my chauffeur anymore because you, you're not a very good company. You're always complaining. You're English, you know, so you always complain. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I'm going to get my own car and, and I'm going to discover the countryside. I'm going to, I think I'm going to still be at the Delaware Hotel. Fantastic. In okay. your beautiful well, Don't tell people, the, Frank. They the might city. all go there and stalk you and try and get your order. I mean, that wasn't the hotel I was no, talking nobody about. Cares. Just in nobody case. Cares. Uh, it was a nobody cares. <laughs> it's true. Uh, with Greenwood withdrawing from the squad through injury, should Maguire and Rashford do the same to protect themselves long term? Would you have done it? And not a chance. No, it's a not a chance. You, these these opportunities are better. Set up straight, man. Yeah. These opportunities don't come around very often. You've only got to look at the gubbins that has been the Scotland team since 1998. You, who'd have thought, ah, oh, we'll beat the Euros in 2000. Ah, oh, we'll beat the World Cup in 2002. This is the first one. I mean, it's unlikely to happen with the bigger countries, but you don't you don't give up an opportunity. Sure. If you've got a niggling injury, you're, you're desperate. These players are desperate to go on the biggest stage. So that's not that's not the way most, I tell you, maybe, the, maybe there's the odd player that thinks that way, the odd one, but most guys that I know are played with, they're doing everything they can to get on that plane, to get into that squad and to play in the games. That's the mentality. Shaka, now that Zidane is gone, does Gareth Bale have a future at Real Madrid? No, there's <laughs> a short answer to that question, Dan. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who resuscitates Gareth Bale in, in that way uh, in Madrid. I, I think he's got to start looking elsewhere. I'm not sure who's willing to take that gamble at how much it's going to cost. Might be the same person that's resuscitating you. Yeah, that, see, I, I thought we were going to go there. <laughs> oh, you want to resuscitate Shaka looking like that? I wouldn't touch him. <laughs> I'd just let him go. I'd let him go and say it was nat natural causes. Could do nothing about it. I'm like. all right. I'm all right. But tomorrow, I'll be like brand new. Are you in the studio I'm tomorrow, Shaq? Are you in the studio with me tomorrow? No. Thank goodness I am. No. Right. For Craig and Frank, do you think Lampard was naive, Frank, in not playing Rudiger when he was the manager at Chelsea? It seems like Rudiger made a difference since Tuchel came. You know, in football, you have to make choices. And uh, sorry, Craig. And, uh, and it's what Lampard did. I mean, there was nothing to complain about the defensive aspect of Chelsea. Zuma was doing great uh, alongside Thiago Silva. Uh, and it was really... You know, a question mark when Stuckel put Zuma out and Rüdiger around. And we, we all wondered, you know, if he was right or wrong. Definitely, he was right. Uh, Rüdiger proved to everybody that he's still, he's still on top of the, of the world. But it's true that Rüdiger was almost going away from Chelsea. That's a choice. Mm. And everything goes wrong or goes against Lampard. But I don't think, you know, in December, November, December, when Chelsea was playing so well, was going very close to, to Manchester City, people were complaining about Lampard. It's only because in December, at the end of December, they started to lose games that, uh, that Lampard uh, uh, was sacked. But before, 
everything was going great for, for, for Lampard and the team. So the, the year before, when they, when they had the transfer ban, Chelsea's defensive record was not very good. Uh, in fact, it was pretty poor. And then they obviously signed Thiago Silva in a free transfer. And they started off the season, they, their defensive record was, I think, it was the best in the league at the time. Mm -hmm. And then things, as, as Frank said, started to go wrong. But it's not just a, a player uh, personnel decision issue. I think it's not as simplistic as, as Tuchel coming in and, and preferring other players. It was Tuchel coming in, looking at his squad and deciding he was completely going to change the shape of the team. And stick with that shape almost all the way from his first game through to the Champions League final with the odd tweak here and there. Uh, and certainly a lot of personnel changes within all those games, but not really many, if any, changes of shape. That was the big, that was the big key. Nadam, which Manchester team had a worse performance in their respective European final? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I would say Man City, because going into the game, I genuinely believe that if they played well, I think they'd have a very good chance of winning the game. But looking at it, you know, we can talk about tactics and so on, but there are probably four or five players who left the field on that day having, knowing that they probably played their worst game of the season. And ultimately, you know, I, don't, I didn't expect that from them. They probably didn't expect that from themselves. And I don't know, it was, a, it was a shame. I think United, obviously, they weren't great. And it feels like more of a crisis, but that's because it was Europa League. But for City, you know, that's one of the worst games I've seen them have all season. So I'm going to have to say Man City. What do you think? Huh. Well, I, I think it's City because City have way higher standards than Man United at the moment. Way higher. Not, not, the mediocrity from Man United doesn't surprise me. Doesn't really surprise me because that's kind of where they are. I mean, they should have beaten Villarreal. I mean, he, he, was, he didn't know when to make a substitute. He was always playing for penalties in the end. But that, that didn't surprise me because they don't have the players that City have. They don't have the coach that City have, mm. has. They don't, right? You know what I think about his team selection. Sure. Uh, I'm not going to go over that. And for those reasons, that, was the, that made it the worst performance because their standards... And I think that's what Nedham's pointing to when these players walk off the field and it's, there's a bigger story than that, but there was certainly a lot of players did not play well. I think there was reasons for that too. But City have set such searing standards of defensive stability and attacking prowess that they, when they went in, they thought they've not even been 50% of how they know they can play. So absolutely City for me. Did you ever wish that you could return to one of your former clubs with the likes of Ancelotti and Pochettino seeming yearningly, uh, seemingly yearning to do so? You went back to West Ham, didn't you, Shaq? Was that nice? I did, yeah. I, I enjoyed that. Um, and after, after Portsmouth told me that they weren't going to be offering me a, a new deal, I actually reached out to Reading to see if... Uh, if, if they were interested, I, I knew I had no more than a year or two left as, as in my playing career, and I just thought it'd be nice to go back to the club that I started with. Um, but then West Ham came in and gave me that opportunity, and, and I, I loved it. I, I enjoyed the, I really enjoyed the year going back to a club that I felt so strongly about. That was, that was a no-brainer for me. Nadam, ever a chance? Like when Mancini left, do you think, oh, now's my chance to get back to Manchester City? Maybe someone will talk to, to me. To be honest. It was that first year under Pep when I thought he was going to call me, but he didn't. Because, you know, it's, and it's a shame because ultimately with Pep as well, when he came on trial at Man City in 2004-5, he was training with me, so he knew my qualities. But unfortunately, he didn't pick me in that first season and oh, I had to deal with it. Oh, man. But, you know, there's still time. If he wants to bring me on board as maybe some sort of team maker, boot cleaner, you know, I'd be more than happy to do so. Hey, man, I think I know that Pep had a trial at City. Yeah, he did, yeah, he did. He came in and he wanted he wanted 18 months. And Stuart Pearce, the manager at the time, I think they only wanted to give him six months. Right. So in the end, he left to go elsewhere. And then before you know it, he was one of the best managers uh, of his generation. Oh, he went to Qatar with Frank LaBeouf. Is that the same timeline, Frank? Uh, with who? With uh, Guardiola, yes. What? Yes, we played golf together. <laughs> we, we played golf together. He paid attention. We really enjoyed, you know, with Batistuta. <laughs> Yero, uh, yeah. the Dubu the brothers, that was great. We ah. had a very good time. What year golf. was that, Frank? We didn't care about playing football. Uh, two, 2000, 
I think uh, two years between 2003 and 2005 yeah, for me no, and for been. Pep, I think is second year. Yeah, people, yeah. people, people. Yeah. Right, I, I shall uh, w phrase this carefully. Uh, people who have talked about Major League Soccer in, in uh, I'm not saying me in negative terms in the past, but when we talk about <laughs> not me, when we talk, when I when I when I say where Frank went to for his career was officially where you go for a jolly up. Yes, yeah. Then it was, as Frank <laughs> said, they couldn't have gave us stuff about yeah. the football yeah. when they went to the Middle East. So why'd you bring up MLS? Because certain people used to accuse the league of, 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 of not me. <laughs> not me. No, no. I mean, Ryan Shaw, I mean, uh, Ryan Shaw Cross. I mean, there are, there are others. <laughs> no, but you know, that used to be the, uh, Let's move on. Did you ever want to go back to Chelsea? Yeah, but no, I Craig. actually, I actually had the chance Craig. to. One second, Frank. I had the chance to. I had the chance to return to Celtic. I, I never. I almost returned to Celtic. Right. And you know, at, at that time, uh, you know, when I left Celtic, I left there uh, in very good terms with the supporters mm. because of the success we had there. And I, I almost went back a year or two later when I was at Derby, when the management changed at Celtic, but. It, it, it didn't happen. Right. I don't think I would have went yeah. for other reasons apart from footballing, but I would have loved to have gone back and played at that club again in front of those supporters, but I don't think I could have went back to Glasgow and lived again there. Did you want to say something, Frank? Uh, Golf. Yes, yes. Uh, about, just, about what Craig just said, you know, it's true that most players in Europe uh, used to think that to go to the MLS would be a pre-retirement uh, situation. Uh, and didn't really take seriously, like I did for Qatar. But the only thing is I can say is, I, I won the championship with Qatar, I've been undefeated, I'd never lost, I always took it seriously. Even if I was playing golf in the morning, it yeah, was Craig. easier. It was just easier for me to play. But I, I was working to make sure we were winning. So I just want to, I don't want to say. Uh, That's what you interrupted holiday. us to say, Frank. It's, it's, that was the it. Only thing is, Do you know Frank How many teams were in the Qatar uh, League? Just to say that I was a professional player. <laughs> How many people were in that league, Frank? Was it you? Just your team? No, no, there was... Uh, you had very uh, good players like Guardiola, Hierro, Dubo yes. Brothers, yeah, uh, Benabia, Giuliari, Desai. They were all playing at the same Giuliari, team. Desai. They were all playing at the no, same no, team. No, 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 we all were... No, we were dispatched in, uh, in all teams. Oh. And I was playing for the uh, government uh, team. Oh, well, because that one's going to win. Where, um, <laughs> Xavi, where Xavi is playing. And I won, of oh, course. Yeah, of course, course you the, won. Won. <laughs> the government run side won. What a massive surprise. Wow. <laughs> uh, Nadam, would you prefer to have a Zidane type manager who is great with the players or an explosive manager like Conte? Um, hmm. Uh, I think probably the explosive type manager because ultimately you know exactly what he wants all of the time and you just have to just get used to it and just deal with it. And ultimately, I think Conte does find levels of success. There's no sort of emotion or anything. It's like, this is your job. You will do this job. And it's very, very clear as a player, you know exactly what's expected of you. So I guess I'd say an explosive type manager because it makes it very, very simple for you. Okay, can we skip this next question, go to the final question, because I know we're running out of time, but I like the final question and I'm intrigued to see what the answers will be. What's the funniest chant or thing fans have ever did in a stadium that distracted you or made you laugh? See, that's the kind of question you need, you need like a heads up. Yeah, I know, but if someone emailed you this question saying, Craig, just have a little think, you wouldn't, you wouldn't open the email on purpose. Correct. Yeah, so, so it's it, lose if you don't, lose if you do. Go to the other boys first. Uh, anyone, anyone a chant that, uh, that springs to mind? Yeah. Go on, Nadam. Uh, oh, go right, on, everyone. <laughs> go on, Nadam. Everybody go. Right, okay. Nadam, you had so, your hand up. So, so, yeah, so my one's just a quick one. So we were talking about the MLS and how it's different. So I went over to Rail Salt Lake and it was my first squad and we were playing uh, against Sporting Kansas City and I was on the bench and I went to warm up and I'm used to hearing like so many hostile things, horrible, horrible things from the touchline. And then somebody came down the uh, steps and came over to me and said, Oi, like, he said, hey, 14. I said, hey, what's up? He said, you're not coming on. I was like, <laughs> okay. 
this is this is the new football, yeah? And then, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can get used to this. The abuse I've been receiving beforehand, and now this is the worst I was gonna get. I said, this is my kind of place. Hey, wow, it. it's all very polite. Uh, Shaka? <laughs> yeah. Um, the one that made me laugh, I, I showed you a photo that I have, I still don't know who, who put that photo on there. Back in my Reading days, I wore a yes. pink shirt. Um, I had a pink goalie shirt one season. And every single away ground I went to, they used to call me Mr. Blobby. <laughs> so, <laughs> that cracked me up to this day. I, I still remember that so well. I, every single away game made me laugh. Yeah, Mr. Blobby was a very popular character on a Saturday night show who was big and pink mm -hmm. and yeah. They think Mr. Blobby, you think Shaka, Frank? You you saw that shit, Dad. You I did saw see. that goalie shit for Reading. Yeah. Pink. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, for me, for me, it was, we, a game we played that Sheffield Wednesday, I think the first year that uh, I was at Chelsea, when, uh, you know, at the time people were quite often coming uh, onto the field, you know, just to cheer up uh, in the middle of the game, uh, to cheer up with, uh, with the players. And, uh, and the lady came in the middle of the game, uh, we had to stop the game, but the girl was naked. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she, she ran completely naked to Dennis Weiss and, uh, and kissed Dennis and fell in, into his arms. And I was next to him and I couldn't stop laughing because, <laughs> and I couldn't think of that. Uh, you know, but, but that, you know, for like 15 minutes, I say, what an awkward situation. I came here to play football and I see that, you know, that's, too much for me. <laughs> Too much. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much, guys. Get well soon, Shaka. Stay away from the studio for a while. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Be right. um, we'll be reflecting on France in action against Wales. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.